Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Global Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to retest the Chang'e 5 sample return mission, lunar sample return mission. I've made the adjustments that I think need to be made. Uh, other details could be added to it, but for now I think it should be functional. We'll try it out. But I'm going to link it in the video description this time, uh, one way or another. And so I'm going to show you how to put it together. First the ascent stage. Uh, one minor change, uh, well first of all I put the backward facing RCS thrusters so they now have visible reality and also I added extendable solar panels so we've got that going for us. We'll have to test whether those solar panels actually recharge stuff uh, but otherwise again there's more detailing that could be added especially given the video of it docking to the orbital stage. Uh, I could use that as reference but for now I think Functionally speaking, this is sufficient, and I added extra ignitions for the engine, for all the engines. And so the ascent engine goes there. I, in order to get the parts, you can just type in Chang uh, there. That's probably the best deal. And yeah, so we can retract the solar panel. Uh, you'll note it is heavier. Uh, it is now 513 kilograms. Wiki said 500 kilograms. Um, so this is okay. Uh, you could underfuel a little bit if necessary. This is still more than enough delta V to get to orbit, so if you really want to hit 500 kilograms, I'm sure you could manage it by adjusting the fuel here. But uh, I'll keep it 513 as it is right now. And so that is the ascent stage. Uh, next up, we will have the decoupler between the ascent stage and descent stage. So that's uh, ascent stage decoupler here. And then we can put the descent stage, which is there. So make sure to get on the right node, not the node on the engine. There's a bottom node on the engine as well. And so this is the descent stage, and then we need the landing legs. And we can just put four-way symmetry. And make sure the little blocks are below there. And right now they'll be extended. Uh, the collider is on the foot, so that's where you'll have to click on it. And then we should action group them, make sure they're on gear. So toggle gear, and actually that'll do it for all of them. That way symmetry works. So we've got the solar panels here, and they extend fine. And actually it might be worthwhile to rotate this like that so that potentially you can extend these solar panels as well if you want to do that. Uh, so we have the descent engine. The models of the engines are very simple and uh, with this we have it says 2867 meters per second which should be enough. Uh, normally I would budget only 2600 for descent and 2200 for ascent so this has margin uh, in all respects. The thrust weight ratio for the moon is fairly high but it can fall down into the necessary range and yep it also has five ignitions now so that's good now uh, as far as fitting things together we're getting to the tough part uh, let me bring out the orbital stage first and I'm gonna temporarily oh uh, let me get rid of symmetry here uh, put it on the side here because we need to attach the sample return capsule but first we need to put a decoupler so we'll just use a procedural decoupler. I didn't make a special decoupler for this. So make sure the decoupler goes in the right place down there. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, let me bring it out because it's clipping the body and so it looks weird. And we'll make the decoupler thin. So it's only 0.1 meters. Uh, we can make it small too. And then going back to the Chang search we can put the sample return capsule on top of that decoupler, not on these other nodes. Make sure it goes along with that decoupler. All right. Um, that should be the right way around for a decoupler. There are some invisible RCS thrusters on the capsule, uh, but I haven't put RCS fuel. Hmm. Uh, so that will be a later fix. Uh, so. For now, you may want to make sure the capsule is oriented properly before letting go of it from the orbital stage. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but 
Its mass is 0.33 tons, and we need parachutes. Uh, we could put, uh, we could manually put some stuff on and just clip it in. If you don't want to wait for a fix, or maybe I completely forget to fix this, <laughs> which is not impossible, what uh, can be done is just uh, clipping a tank in there and then adding RCS thrusters. But for now, I'll try it like this and see if it works out. Uh, so radial parachutes, these are real shoot parachutes. I'll put two and we'll resize them so that they're small. So previous, um, that looks like the smallest size. And I've budgeted 0.1 tons for it, so that looks about right when you take a look at the part mass. And our current craft mass, we can input it, and I would want 0.33 tons. Okay, so I think this total part mass is per parachute thing and we're down 2.05 so it should be 0.1 tons with them combined this is the aperture where the sample would go in theory okay so that's the capsule going back to chung we have the ascent stage docking adapter i hope that goes on right this will decouple from that and then we have this fairing. Okay. Okay, right. Um, this way. And then this goes on. Uh oh. Um, maybe I need to reroute. Right. There. Okay. Uh, it might have been good to have these thrusters oriented differently. We'll assume that they don't have them fire just yet or something because otherwise they'll blast the descent stage. We need to put the engine on, the orbital engine. There we go. And that has plenty of delta V and now we're up to 8.065 tons of the 8.2 that they advertise. And part of the reason is we don't have the drills. So these are just the stock drills reconfigured. And I'm going to put them in two-way symmetry just for balance sake. Otherwise it's going to get complicated. No snapping. And I put them like this and tuck them in like that. And I'm using these drills. I made these for the previous video, but then I decided to use these so that we can guarantee the acquisition of ore. Otherwise it seems like we may not get the ore depending on the concentration where we land at. So... There we go, we're at 8.1 tons now, which I think is close enough. So I'm fixing staging, making sure the fairing happens. That'll decouple from both sides simultaneously. It's a stack separator. And then we'll want the descent stage stuff to be active. And then that let go, let's go, and then this. Uh, the, R the delta V reading is now completely messed up because of the rearrangement. Uh, we still need to put solar panels on this stage and so I use my Gagayan spacecraft solar panels. You can pick whatever solar panels you want but I think these were okay. Uh, in fact they're very good looking so I prefer them. Uh, they require some rotation. So that is the Chang'e 5 probe built. And now we need the subassembly of the Long March 5 rocket which is part of the real rockets pack. Gagayan spacecraft should be part of the real spacecraft pack. All right, so that is how to build the Chang'e 5. I didn't talk about how to build the rocket, but that's a different video. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. And separation. Off they go. Bearing set. 
Okay. Okay, the conclusion of the core stage here. And that's good. Separation and ignition. Ooh, a little bit tight there. All right. Okay, we are making orbit now. And everything is looking good so far. Even with the somewhat heavier mission. We seem to have the requisite amount of Delta V here. Okay, we'll shut down there. 314 by 237.8. That's higher than it probably needs to be. But it'll be alright. Somewhere around here-ish. We'll be transferring. Okay, and ignition. And we are on our way. Let's see how this goes. Oop. All right, a little bit further than I wanted. Once again, I think it's just better to go on the opposite side of the moon now. Uh, because we have thrusters that can push us forward on this stage, but we don't have thrusters that can push us back. That's on the next, that's on the this, uh, orbital stage we have those. Though whether we want to use them in that way is questionable since the descent stage is on top of it and would be blown by those thrusters. Okay, let's see if decoupling does the rest or whether we need to do a little bit more with the orbital stage. So um, I'll just stage normally. Okay. And solar panels out. And they do extend the descent stage solar panels now as well. Oh, I put them in line, that's not great, but... We are recharging. The sun's in front of us, so it's actually the descent stage one that's recharging the... I put the solar panels down here so that they're backward facing. So the spent stage will crash into the moon, so that's good. If we want to get to the landing site, or at least potentially do so, we need some inclination here. So I'm going to do a mid-course adjustment to actually incline my orbit. I don't want to do that because it makes rendezvous harder, but here we are. It, it's not a guarantee that we're coming in at the right time, though. To hit it. In other words, it could potentially be, a, uh, well, two weeks until the landing site actually goes under this orbit. The, but our propellants are storable, so technically I could still manage it. But anyway, let's do this first and then I'll think about it. Okay, so there's the spin stage and everything. And off we go. 8.138 tons. I think this can be an RCS only sort of thing. We haven't checked the plumes on the stages. We had a problem with that on the first try. I think I've got them fixed, but we'll see. The solar panels do not currently rotate. They don't have a pivot. I don't know if the real ones have a pivot either. Okay, now we're in Lunar SOI. Let's see what the situation is as far as the landing site. So... Landing guidance. Inner coordinates. Yeah, that's fine. What we wanted was... 58.1 degrees west. It's not exact. It's um, roughly... Supposed to be this Mons Rumker in the northern part of Oceanus Procellarum. So Oceanus Procellarum is there. Uh, it looks doable, but it's in the dark. Might as well have gone polar. This is definitely the wrong time to get to this particular location. Okay, how much would that cost? 1,172. I think we've got it. 
but that also depends on how well we can break orbit later. So, all right, we'll do this initial bit first. That plume is fine, but I think this plume was fine uh, last time as well. Okay, the moon might have rotated a bit in the meantime. Yes, it has, so let's readjust this. Uh, it's even worse. <laughs> Maybe I should just wait until it comes over here in like two months, uh, two weeks, not two months. Um, yeah, let's let's wait for daylight and we'll wait two weeks then. Okay, upgrade. Probably a little bit late actually, but we'll see. And ignition. I mean, it's a 25 minute stage right now. Could be that they're using a more powerful engine. I don't know. I did end up putting a more powerful engine on the Ascent stage. It's now 3 kilonewtons because I saw somewhere that that's what it was. I don't know how powerful the engines are on the other two stages. I just put what was logical on the Descent stage and assumed that they would use the same one for the orbital stage because there's no reason to use a different one. Um, it would be simplest to use the same engine on both. Except I gave the at orbital stage more ignitions. I gave it 20 because they would be able to carry more helium to pressurize the tanks on the orbital stage because it's larger than they can carry on the descent stage. And nor that's one limiting factor how much helium you can carry to pressurize the tanks not the only limiting factor but it's one well we've captured we can if we so choose do two burns okay I think we'll do another burn to bring our orbit down we are in orbit just in a really high orbit right now but we've got time to kill that uh, location is gonna have to come around a long ways okay here we go again sign fuel down and ignition I noticed that the real mission is taking its time coming back and that's probably in order to get things lined up properly for where it's supposed to come down, the capsule is supposed to come down. And we're just sort of doing things in reverse, I guess. <laughs> we're, uh, we're hanging out a long time around the moon in order to get the landing site in the right place rather than our return site. So that's what we'll be doing and I'll be doing it in a tracking station but we're in a fine orbit right now. So. Okay, I think we're close enough now that we should proceed with a landing. So I'll start off with our operations on the opposite side. It might be a little bit dark at the locations right on the borderline there. Okay. So the orbital stage. Okay, kill rotation, please. That's that. Yep, okay, that's fine. And... Separation and stage. Okay. And let's check that this part is going to be okay. It is not recharging at the moment. We'll just reorient it. But also push it away from that fairing. Don't need that to happen. Okay, 2,344 meters per second, plenty. Okay, we have a ground intersecting periapsis. Let me ignite. 11 minute stage. We're at low thrust right now. I'm not gonna hit it exactly because we'll have to tilt north for that. Now the solar panels, uh, even though they look like they're double-sided, they only uh, get power from the top side here. 
you know, will be south of the actual landing location, but at least in the same general area. Okay. Looks smooth enough, I guess. Okay. Pretty easy to handle. Bloop. All right, we are on the ground. Let's see if we can get some ore. Okay, start surface harvester. Okay, so we are getting ore. Just throwing it up there. We'll just catch whatever chunks it manages to toss up. Uh, we're recharging. We could probably use both drills. It looks like it's going to take some time at this rate. We only need 0.2, which is the 2 kilograms. But there's obviously... Uh, the, the drills themselves are really small. And this is probably not a very ore rich area. Okay, it's taking. It'll take a few orbits of the orbital stage before we actually get it done. It's been a few hours here. Okay, not bad. So those will go directly in here. No need for an arm or anything. I presume it'll oops, it'll stop showing a negative there once it's topped off and full. There we go. Okay, make sure we have our target again. It's right in front of us. This is probably ideal. It's made a few orbits. So heading 251-ish. We're we're south of it now because of the couple of orbits that it's done. Okay, so throttle up. RCS on, and we'll go with kill rotation for now, but I, I, let's see, let me type in the 248 uh, pitch 90. Maybe that's for the best if we just go straight to that. Okay, good thing it can't lift off with the RCS, huh? Go. Go. All right. This is a much more powerful engine than it was last time. And we really don't need it to be this powerful, but apparently it is. Plume-wise, I think we're okay. It could do with a little bit more adjustment, but it's okay. Now, the peculiar docking mechanism that we've got. We did not get a chance to test that last time. Okay... Alright, RCS is working fine. And we'll just uh, take another orbit. We might as well. Keep it nice and calm here. Seems like a fairly precise closest approach distance and good relative velocity. Oh. Uh... Hmm. This doesn't seem right, does it? Turn that off. Uh, we, we're not officially docked because it doesn't have the combined stuff of both sides. We might have a flaw here. I don't know what is going on. Maybe if I go to the tracking station and come back, we'll see. Or maybe it'll all explode. I don't know. You can uh, put a regular docking port on. I mean, there seems to be enough margin. So if you just put a propellant-only docking port be, uh, on top of the orbital stage on that thing, on that platform, and also put one on the ascent stage, that'll probably be easier and more straightforward. Well, they're definitely not docked. It's definitely separated there. 
And I think my attempt to build in a docking port into these things might not have been successful here. Uh, close. I really approached really, really carefully. It wasn't very far off. I don't. I didn't put any rotational thing. I don't think. Maybe, maybe it's a matter of rotation. I don't know, but that doesn't make much sense to me. No, let's uh, set this as target. Okay, slow down. Oh. Oh, well, I mean, it definitely has magnetism. Maybe too much magnetism. So yeah, just use regular docking ports. There should be enough margin on the Delta V for that. It'll have to be a small docking port, like a propellant only one. So, uh, we don't have the ore, but we'll pretend we have the ore. And I forget when this docking adapter decouples, but let's just go ahead and test it decoupling now before we go any further. Ooh, a little bit of a weird thing going on there. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe it's the orientation of it that's the problem. We'll have to see. Okay, so this is what's left, and we're going to try and get back to Earth. Our odd inclination may make it complicated, we'll see. Nope, it looks like it won't be. Now if we were trying to get to a particular location on Earth, that would be a different story. But I'm not going that far this time. It'll have to be a propellant only docking port, not one of the big docking ports on the ascent stage and on this. The bigger docking ports definitely would not work in terms of delta V or even just the physical size of them. Okay, that's still targeted so I can make sure we don't hit it, which it's pretty close. Now you can see we've got tons and tons of Delta V here, that's no problem. Okay, well, goodbye little Ascent module. Didn't quite work out this time. So for now, the capsule does not have independent control, and you can change that just by adding some propellant into it, you could just clip a tank into it. Uh, it has an RCS thruster, has RCS thruster vectors. And in retrospect, uh, my current situation might be bad because the parachutes are not heat shielded. The capsule all around is heat shielded, but the parachutes aren't. <laughs> so it's not the best thing. Anyway, we are departing and headed back. Now, I'm not doing anything with comms, so please make note of that. Okay, well, we'll have to orient it well and hope that this does not smash right into it. <laughs> In order to avoid that, let me retract the solar panels. Uh, very little electric charge in there. Okay, arm parachutes. Separation. Oop, we want to follow that. 
probably like a piece of debris. Oh, I forgot I have to put the RCS configuration on. I'll do that before linking it in the video description. But again, you'd have to put some... Pr I'll put a little tank in. I'll put a little tank in. You won't have to clip a fuel tank. I'll do it for you. This is pretty heavy. 0.427 tons. I'll... Uh, I may make some of that uh, propellant instead of having it just be a dry mass. I don't know how heavy it's supposed to be. Obviously, it could be heavier than this even and still survive. Oh, 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 oh. But, but, but they're on the nice side. Ah. Hmm. I don't know. This has a collider all over it. But maybe it conducted too much heat. Hmm. Well, it's going to smash into the ground really, really fast. If it survives that long, we'll we'll see. Pretty reasonable drag, it seems. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good as far as this without the parachutes is concerned. Okay, well, it survived. It just won't survive impact with the ground. Well, we might as well verify that. We need those parachutes. Okay, we correctly exploded there. Alright, so I'll add RCS to the capsule, but why the parachutes decided to explode when they were on the opposite side of where the heat ought to be, that's a whole other business. Maybe I should separate off the heat shield as a separate part, but for now I won't. Um, you could tweak scale down uh, another heat shield and put it at the bottom of it if you want to. I'll think about that. Anyway, more testing will be necessary, but uh, we have parts available in Kerbal Space Program to mitigate some of the disastrous factors like the docking not quite working out and uh, having the parachutes explode on us. So I'll leave that to you. I'll link it in the video description after I made the RCS fix and hopefully you can use it if you like. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.